Hello, everybody, Woo! and welcome to another fantastic episode of Men Who Talk Through Movies. Yeah. I am your host. I'm Jeb. You mm -hmm. might know me from all my other appearances on this podcast. With me is my co-host, Steven, who is also with me all the What's time up, on dudes? this podcast. And returning with us is our good buddy, James, who y'all haven't seen since our Batman Begins episode. Yo. And, and with us for the very first time. Oh, yes, it's good to have you. And with us for the very first time is our good friend, Alex Huff. We Greetings, friends. My name is Smash the Dwarf. And yes. I'm, I'm Alex. Nice to meet everyone. Hello. It's a pleasure to be here. So, yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us, buddy. I'm glad you were able to join us. So welcome again to Men Who Talk Through Movies. Today is a very special, special episode because this is the very first episode that I had to watch the movie before recording. <laughs> I never saw this movie until <laughs> I never saw this movie until last night. So this is a very special movie for me because normally I know what to talk about. I know key scenes. I don't know anything about this movie. But I think yeah. this will lead to a very special uh, wave wave seeing things. It yeah. will, yeah. So we are watching. I am watching. Me and Stephen are both watching, and I think Alex is. I didn't hear where he's watching, but we're all watching on. Hulu, James is watching on Disney Plus. So if you have those, you can, that's where you can find the movie. If you have it on DVD, just pop it in your DVD player, push play when I say go. Have we said the uh, movie? You, yet? Can, you can watch it on YouTube, rent it for three bucks. Same with Amazon Prime. But yeah, are you guys ready? I am ready. Mm -hmm. All right. So we are going to be starting in five, four, three, two, one, go. I, bum. Thought, I, bum, thought, bum. I thought if I acted super excited that it would help me to hate it less, and it did not. Well, 20th <laughs> century fantastic. <laughs> That's what Fox. you get when you get me to host. You're going to get my YouTube intro, my friend. That I'm is, sorry. That's how it is. I can't, is I, I, I can't not do that. <laughs> yeah. If you don't want me to host, then don't say, hey, Jeff, <laughs> you got this one. Uh, interesting fact for the audience, but um, you know, before we get into the rest of the commentary, uh, this is the first time that all four of us here are YouTube creators. Really? Yeah. Yep. What an honor. And that's dope. So, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and drop your channels, like where. Whoa, whoa, where people whoa, can... whoa! I'm the host. I'm I should be the one. I'm Guys, why don't you go ahead and drop your YouTube names? Steven, starting with you. So because it was my idea as the host. All right. So uh <laughs> um you he can find point. me as the host. You can find me at one out of one. You will see that I usually average somewhere between five and ten views, except for this one video that just exploded into a thousand. Um, but you can find nice. it. it was really weird. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> um but yeah, you can find me at one out of one, and of course here on Mongoose. That's it. Alex, Spash, you, <laughs> dual identity. I am I am a Spash the Dwarf on YouTube. Um, currently, I do product reviews where uh, my manling uh, will find me something to eat or drink, and I will review it, and it has nearly killed me once. <laughs> but I, I intend to continue because I'm a dwarf of my word. And that's uh, that's about it, I think. James, where can they find you? Um, just YouTube channels, just my name. It's just James Justice. Uh, mostly I just post random videos I've recorded or just memes. Nice, nice. And y'all can find me on YouTube at Just Jeb Schaefer. Just Jeb is one word, space Schaefer. And you can also find me on Twitch. I'm a Twitch streamer now. Twitch streamers are cool. Uh, I currently just finished playing through the first Kingdom Hearts game, my favorite video game, and I plan on going through Uncharted, Crushing Mode, uh, possibly also going through the Assassin's Creed series. So that's where y'all can find me. That's what you can expect. I do Let's Plays, and yeah, cool. there you go. Also, really random, Perfection. the subtitles on my phone are for some reason in Spanish. <laughs> that is weird. Considering this Why? movie is set in England. Uh, 
How about that you change it? Strange. To, how about you change it to English? Wow, she's it's, glowing. It's in English. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was talking about. <laughs> she's practically glowing. <laughs> I just Love one it. of the best parts about this movie is the soundtrack. Yeah, I agree. There's a I lot of sure. very good things about this movie. There are. And this is uh, James. This is this was your requested movie. Why'd you request this movie? Well, this is my favorite movie. Um, behind Lord of the Rings. Um, I adore everything about this film. And, and it's fairly short. So it's, but, um, and this is also one of the rare instances I can think of where the movie is better than the book. <clears throat> I, I didn't know it was a book. Yeah. yeah it was a you, you know how book. it opens up with someone holding a book? I, this is, I didn't yeah. know it either until I looked up uh, some trivia. But yeah, this was an actual book. Oh, cool. I watched this on a plane uh, flying home from England, and um, it was one of the in-flight movies, and I fell in love with it. And then I've, like, I've loved watching it ever since. I love the, just the minor details of it. Like, uh, bit... At this point right here, you can see the wind going through his fur Yeah, for every frame. And it's very interesting to look at it's something I'll bring up later, but uh, what I love about this 12 movie, fox years later. <laughs> what I love about it is it shows dark themes with a happy feel. Yes. Like it, it tries to, and it's, you know, the animation does help with that, but it's, I think it's a very effective storytelling method to be able to tell a story uh, that has very dark material but to do mm-hmm. it from a lighthearted perspective. I mean, Tim Burton is probably yeah. the biggest name that does that. Um, Cause you got, you got the corpse bride, which is like a very, very dark film, but it feels so happy because mm-hmm. of like uh, the way that they approach it and the way that they uh, do the animation stuff. It's, it's, it feels happy, but it's super sad, but it's happy, but it's super sad. Yeah. Right. It, it gives you a feeling of, the same feeling that the nostalgia gives to me, mm-hmm. just and not quite sad, but not quite happy either. Yeah, a a very good middle ground. Mm-hmm. So, one of the things that I really loved about watching this the first time yesterday was the themes of it. I I, I love themes. If y'all couldn't tell from our last episode that just posted with the Dark Knight, I just did themes with just Jeb and. I don't know, something about the father-son aspect of it, you know, a father understanding his son for who he is. That just re- that really struck, that really got to me. That's a recurring theme in a lot of Wes Anderson films. It is. Yeah. And it's, it, it's, it is a very powerful storytelling uh, method. Yeah. I mean, come to think of it, most of like the really popular movies and the, the classic films take place around that father-son relationship type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You've got The Godfather for one. Um, and even though it's not direct, I mean, like Batman, like he's, the, you know, the loss of his father trying to live up to his father's shadow in the past. Mm-hmm. I think that is uh, King of the Hill. <laughs> King of the Hill. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> you're going to sell propane one King day. You're going to like it. <laughs> Big day, I don't want you, Dad. <laughs> okay, Dad. All right, Kylie was my favorite character too. I love <laughs> Kylie. <laughs> he's a little he's <laughs> perfection in every way. <laughs> yep, right there. I relate to him so much. This—that's how I like process everything. It's one of the, it's one of the <laughs> things that my wife taking just, a moment. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of the things my wife just like gets frustrated by because like if I'm deep in thought, I will just stare off into nothingness. Like, yeah, I'll just stay there for like way too extended period of time. So, go ahead. My question, I I I was going to save it until later, but I the question I had for you guys. This is obviously. Claymation, mm-hmm. puppetry, whatever, right? Right, right. Stop motion. Right. Yeah. Stop motion. 
that is my least favorite mm. animation style. I mm. really hate. I mean, I still watch movies that are based on this animation because it is like amazing to see how these movies are made when they have to like basic. Like, I think I read in the trivia on IMDb, this took fifty six thousand shots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, Bill Murray. It's one of his favorite oh, people to use. <clears throat> that is Bill Murray. So yep. my question for y'all, as y'all know, as I said, this is my least favorite animation style. But what is y'all's favorite? This. You like claymation, okay? I, claymation slash stop motion. I, I love it. I used. I mean, that's how. That's how. Like all of this got started. Uh, you know, my whole filmmaking yes. stuff, Mongoose Productions, all of it got started with me and a little stop motion camera and some Lego figures. That's that. That's what started everything for me. Yep, I do remember. Like, and your stop motion was cool. I'm. I had to post some of the old ones because I've finally, finally got the old hard drive from my mom, and so now I have all of my old stop motion stuff. Yeah. All right, Spash. What is your favorite animation style? If you say Pixar, uh, uh. if you say Pixar CGI, I'm kicking you off the call. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about that with me because okay, I am a, I'm a fan of traditional animation. Good. Okay. Um, drawing every frame, frame by frame, uh, using the old tricks of like the the moving cameras to give depth, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, Here we go. And the reason is, oh wait, we gotta watch this. <laughs> the scene. cussing scene. <laughs> the cussing scene. <laughs> Are you cussing with me? <laughs> you cussing with me? Don't cuss with someone you're not going to cuss with. Uh, I it's, love it. This is another one of the best parts of the film, was the, the substitute swearing with the word cuss. Yes. yes. Yeah. Right, so it's, these it's are genius. my favorite shots of the movie, is when they went 2D. Like yeah. side to side. Yeah. Yeah. This is also something it's that very unique in stop motion. Even in his live action films. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's a Wes Anderson staple, which is why I like him so much. Um, but yes, my favorite animation style is traditional. And the, the reason being is because my first movie memory, although the first, according to my parents, the first movie I ever went to was Tarzan. Mm-hmm. My first memory Ooh, of a movie. Yes, right. Uh, my first memory was bringing home from movie gallery a movie called Castle in the Sky. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Yes. I was seven years old, and I remember it very clearly. I was laying on my little bed. Um, I had Thomas the Tank Engine painted on my wall by my mother <laughs> because she's fantastic. Based. <laughs> and on my little... 20 by 20 TV. I watched Castle in the Sky and I was like, I've never seen anything like this. Yeah. I've watched cartoons. I've watched, uh, t- you know, the Timon and Puma cartoon. Yes. It, it was yeah. the same, but it was different. It, it was animation. It was drawn, but it was Go so off. much more than that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Christoph. Freaking Christoph. It. No, it's Freaking okay. Show off. <laughs> Whooping in admiration. Thank you, subtitles. <laughs> um, <laughs> whereas, and I'm just using Timon and Puma as an example because I love them. Whereas the, the main purpose of them was comedy. The purpose of Castle in the Sky was to tell a story. Mm-hmm. You don't, you used to not really get that in cartoons. Now, now it's, a, you know, okay. Everyone tells a story in cartoons. Now, Steven Universe, for example, everyone tells a story. But yeah. that was my first time ever seeing an animation that didn't feel like it was made just for kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. It felt to me like animation could be something for everyone to enjoy. And that that's why traditional is my favorite style. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will come back to you because I have a second question to ask. Uh, James, your favorite style of animation? Um, I'm also in the camp of traditional hand-drawn animation. Okay, and I also fall in that. But so, Stephen, out of the out. stop motion that you've seen, yeah. who has been your favorite? Like, which style has been your favorite? Which st- I think you can figure out which uh, 
which animated <laughs> movie is my favorite of the Coraline. stop motions. Yes, Coraline. Coraline. I love Coraline. Um, it is a good it's a one. Very good movie. It's another one of those films that takes those dark themes and puts them in like a childlike format. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's why I have so much respect for the genre because they have to get so creative with what they do. That's why right. I like like things like this, things like Coraline or the Wallace and Gromit movies is like because they're not using or not using much uh, CGI animation, they have to do so much like creative and inventive stuff on set. Like uh, water could be like a piece of plastic that they uh, stretch back and forth or like um, I'm trying to remember what one of them was. I think in uh, one of the Wallace and Gromit movies, it was like, a piece of paper to show like falling water. And then it was like sand in the cup. And it's like, it's, it's things like that where they have to be so inventive in order to make it appear like it's, you know, moving things. I think that's why I like, uh, and, and I don't have like any names that I follow, but I can point to you like certain instances where there's like something creative going on. If you want to see like the best of uh, stop motion animation, I would say go to Coraline and watch the garden scene. The, I'm, mm. Cause I, I think, I think, yeah, yeah. I, we watched this movie. To, we watched Coraline we, together. I introduced we did. We did that garden scene before everything has that sinister turn. And he like, they're just showing off all of their creative stuff. And it, it makes like the whole world open up. And it's like, this is all happening in one room without much or any help from computers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. Smash, from traditional animation, do you have anyone that you admire their animation? (sighs) Do I need to come back to you? Yeah, let me think a little bit. Okay, James, same question. Well, I have to. Th- that's something also I have to think about. But okay, do... then I'll answer. <laughs> I mean, so, there's there's just so many there's so many different animation studios that are just really, really right. Good. There are there are, which is why I'm gonna give you all time because I've been thinking about this a lot recently. Now everyone knows Disney. We know they are the big powerhouse in animation, and they know their stuff. Okay, my, however, I think I like the animation style of Don Bluth better. Don Bluth, what does he do? He's um, done All Dogs Go to Heaven, The Secret uh, of Nim, Anastasia, Land Before, Land Time. Land Before Time. Okay. I can agree with that. Don Bluth's... <laughs> Distant cousin of Mitt Romney. Yeah. Oh, that, For, never mind. I, I take it back. That's interesting trivia. I take it back. He actually is, though. Well. <laughs> that um, is good to know. I just, for some reason, his style of... and I watched a video. It was... It wasn't really talking about his animation. It was talking about his musical movies because there were some, but they weren't the greatest. I'd like to watch this scene real quick. Oh, okay. This is this is one of my favorite scenes in the movie, <laughs> and this is a good example of creativity. Yeah, yeah. Different. It's different. Yeah. Different. <laughs> like that right there, cotton swab. Yes, exactly. That. Yeah, the yeah. Cotton. That's so great. Cotton, again. And, like, And I just love Christopherson's reaction. Uh, you've destroyed the whole experiment. Yeah. <laughs> he's very, he's very like, chill the entire yeah. time. It's yeah. Very, very uh, dry humor all throughout this film. Yes. Speaking it of It feels dry, very real. Yeah. Speaking of dry humor, you guys want to hear a, a desert joke? Sure. Cool. And then I'll go back on my Don Bluth. Cool. Yes. All please. right. A blonde, a redhead, and a brunette were lost in the desert. Okay. They found a lamp and rubbed it, and a genie popped out and granted them each one wish. Okay. The redhead wished to be back home. Poof. She was back home. The brunette wished to be home with her family. Poof. She was back home with her family. The blonde said, Aw, I wish my friends were here. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, I, the wolf. The wolf thing. It's important symbolism in this film. Yes. 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 And I love how they keep coming back to it. Which of I have a phobia. We yeah. visit at the end of the movie. What the cuss? <laughs> <laughs> What's this lightning bolt? 
<laughs> because I have a phobia uh, of that. <laughs> what you have phobia? Of? That's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so back to Don Bluth. I don't know why. Yes, like, please. yes, Disney knows their stuff, but I just like how Don Bluth's animation looks better. But he worked for Disney for a while. He did. But, yeah. I, I I can't explain it. It's just I look at the Don Bluth movies. Bump. <laughs> 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 it's so cute. Like they're adorable it when is. they pass out. <laughs> Beagles love blueberries, guys. Mm -hmm. Can confirm doggos love blueberries. Although, uh, our dog Atomic... Oh, he didn't wake up. Okay, good. Um, our Greyhound, he loves blueberries as well. But the problem is, is his snoot is so long that he can't really nib on them. So it'll just be like his front teeth just like barely scraping the front of the blueberry until he's finally <laughs> able to lick it into the back of his throat. Oh, That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. I said one bite. <laughs> <laughs> this movie is just <laughs> here. I think there's a kind of teeth from you. <laughs> it's just a, it's such a charming there's film. One. It is. It, it's every bit of it is soaked in just personality. Yes, oh, yes, it is. And like, I love Roald mm -hmm. Dahl, bless him. But like this movie, like it. It improves on the book in like every way. Yeah, that's so rare in films. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no goose, you're okay. <laughs> Follow me again. <laughs> I am curious, actually. So, so James, you've said that this this uh, this movie is better than the book. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have any instances where you think that the book? even with its differences, is as good as the movie. Like, we usually we pick, like, one or the other. Have, have you guys ever come across an instance where you found one to be just about as equal as the movie? Hmm. I'm not sure if this counts. The Giver. Oh. Interesting the Giver. choice. Um, the Series of Unfortunate Events movie with Jim Carrey. Mm -hmm. I okay. thought it was, like, even though it wasn't that great of an adaptation, I just thought it was a good movie in its own right. Yeah, I thought it was it, it was funny. It was great. Yeah, me, I guess Lord of the Rings. Yes, was going to be my answer because now this is just me. I grew up watching those movies and didn't read the books until I was at Truett. Mm -hmm. So because mm -hmm. I also tried watching reading Lord of the Rings three times before I got to Truett and I couldn't make it through. I read The Hobbit though. It's a hard read. I. I'm the type of person who will read things and cry. Oh, this is a cool scene too. I'm sorry with yep. the cameras. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I love. It. Anyway, anyway, I am also. Uh, I I read things in chronological order, as one should when there's a story. So I would always yeah. start with the Hobbit, make it through the Hobbit, no problem. As soon as I started Fellowship of the Ring. I could not make it to like chapter past chapter five. Was that was that during the Tom Bombadil segment? I don't even think I made it to the Tom Bombadil. Tom section. Bombadil is a king. He is he's, a king. He is I can't something. believe they got Lightning McQueen to voice the ferret in this. No, no <laughs> right. The funny, part, the funny part about this, like Owen Wilson, is like very good. Like he's always been really good friends with Wes Anderson for, wow. like, forever. Yeah, yeah. The funny part was that this character got his own movie poster. And like he's yeah. yelling on the poster for the film, and he's only he in this one scene. Two lines. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Wow. I as for liking the movies of Lord of the Rings better, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Although some Tolkien fans might disagree, mm -hmm. but the general sentiment is that both can be enjoyed entirely in their own right because they're both they fantastic. They are. Um, and the books are hard to read. Yes. I've read them twice, and they are hard to Just read. I had to, uh, I had to, had to use an audio book. Yeah, and my, I'm currently going through an audio book series of them myself. I think with Rob Inglis, mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm halfway through the Two Towers, and he's he's adding so much to it because reading it is one thing, but hearing it mm -hmm. as it's written is entirely different. Yes, I want to get the so, audio book. I want to get the audio book where Andy Serkins. Circuit, however you say Andy it. Andy Circus, yeah. 
Yeah, where he's doing the reading. Yeah, he's very good. There's one that he does a really good gob- uh, goblin impression too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's he could have been him in the movies if you ask me. I know it's uncanny. Father, <laughs> me. There's there's a one guy that does stuff for free. I would have to look it up and tell you guys who it is because I don't remember. But uh, he does he does the audiobooks for the Lord of the Rings movies uh, for free as a podcast, and he got the rights to the music so that he could use the music in. Ooh. Oh, it's nice. Oh, it's so good, Ooh. my dudes. It's it's golden. That sounds but, yeah. awesome. But I I agree with that sentiment with Lord of the Rings because like. They, I mean, because the books are spectacular and they do add a lot, especially to Aragorn's character. Like, yes, the, the movies kind of give him like this more like gruff, jaded character, which works. Mm-hmm. But he's also that like broken hero who doesn't. He, he's not quite ready to lead, but he has to. And right. Then, I, I don't know. I feel like the changes you know- that they made for the movies needed to be there because the books, the way that they're written don't function super well in a cinematic sense. Mm. So I think that the changes mm-hmm. that they made yeah. worked for the movies, um, but the books are still absolutely just spicy. Good. Yes. I think my favorite, one of my favorite adaptations of Aragorn is into the Kyle Bashi th- films, the animation. Mm. where they have him as almost a Native American sort of guy. He has darker skin, black hair. Um, and to me, he always looked Native American in that. And it, and it was like, okay, yeah, he knows the land. He's a ranger. Uh, he has all this deep knowledge of how things in the world work. It was just a, a kind of a, a neat sort of twist on that. Yeah. That is interesting. And on that mm. note, my favorite animation... My favorite animator. Oh yeah, and I Let's cannot go. remember his oh, yeah. name for the life of me. Um. Oh goodness, and I f- feel bad for not remembering it, but he's one of the main Walt Disney animators back okay. when Walt was alive in their their golden era. Um, he had that he had this sort of animation thing that he would do to show off, where he could like make a character go. <laughs> like wave his head back and forth yeah. while he laughed or something proudly. And every time I think of that, I'm like, that is just pure showing off. This dude <laughs> knows what he's doing and no one else can do it. And people would try to recreate it and they couldn't do it. And uh, I'm going to remember his name later, I think. But uh, It's rad! It's probably... It's Willem Dafoe. <gasps> it's Willem Dafoe. It is Willem Dafoe. <laughs> Willem. Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Another one of Wes Anderson's um, favorite people to use. I mean, because because he's so yes. talented. Why does he have to be in basically porn movies outside of the ones that we know? He was pretty good, I, in John Wick. Yeah, I looked. I, I looked up like his uh, like his discover. What's that word? His most popular movies and whatnot, mm-hmm. and like the ones that we know him in, like this Grand Budapest, um, Spider Man. He's you know he's got a couple of them like that. Wait, he's in Spider Man. Yeah, he's a uh, he's a uh, the first Goblin. <laughs> he's also in the newest Spider Man. Oh, he is. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I'm gullible. <laughs> so cool. Um, I like, can okay, guys. I, I I think I say this in almost every podcast, but I cannot wait till we do the Spider Man movies. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that didn't we put them on the. No, no, Rises was the next one we put on. After we finish Rises, uh, we'll make that the next trilogy that we do. Yes. To be, again, I think we should do all eight? I think eight's correct, yeah. Because there's three, there's three, there's three Holland, three Maguire, two Garfield. Yes. My well, math you checks can, out. You say that there's a third Garfield. <laughs> yeah. There's no way home. Okay, so yeah. so so we're we're yeah. three Holland, four ish Maguire, three ish Garfield. Yeah. Which Stephen, have you seen No Way Home yet? No. Stephen, I'm why sorry. haven't you seen No Way Home? I am so superheroed out, my dude. I know it. 
It's not like I'm asking you to watch every Avengers movie leading up to No Way Home. I Just know. watch Spider Man. I'm aware. I like how her eyes are so bad she can't really recognize it. Oh yeah, there's a fox holding himself in the shape of a bottle. She was a, she has a cataract or some form. She was a great character to add suspense, but she also felt like yeah. she also felt like kind of like one of those characters that you just plug into a horror game to add some suspense. But it's like, yeah. okay, I know how you're programmed, so I can escape you. She's the like mom Mr. and Mario where Mr. X in Resident Evil 2. Mm. Kind of want to play the um because I hear Resident Evil Four is getting remake, and isn't that like the best Resident Evil game? Yes, or the one of them. Never... Remake it. It's uh, I've never played Resident Evil. I'm trying to think of like all Me the neither, big but... long series and their most popular games because it's it's Final Fantasy Seven, I think. That's a good one. That's and a good Soul one. Caliber Forty Eight, <laughs> and uh. Which was the super famous Tekken game? Was it two? I don't know. Those fighting games aren't really for me. So, I, other than playing them at your house growing up, Stephen, I don't know didn't know much about Tekken. Although yeah. that Dragon Ball Z game, which, no, which see, one is it? This is an example of Dumbledore using the most powerful spell of all: gun. <laughs> <laughs> Because that is Michael Gambon. <laughs> is it is really? It, is it Michael? It is. That's awesome. Also, the use of lighting here. This is another thing. When Getting back to animation stuff, part of my gripe with modern animation stuff is it's too bright. The use of darkness in this movie is just awesome. And this is his first, this was his first ever animated film. I'm sending something to the group yeah. chat you made of us, Steven, so I can show you what I tried to make on After Effects. Oh, okay. It was going to be animated, but then my computer kind of crashed. Oh, The app crashed, and then my computer crashed. Bandit hats are cool. Mm. But, These like, cool. <laughs> I was very proud of making that. I'll have to look at it afterwards, because I'm watching on my phone, and if I change the screen, uh, then uh, the recording will mess up. Oh. Well, oh, no, not the shooting! Anything but the <gasps> shooting! I keep forgetting. Is the light an acorn? Yeah. Yes. Aw. My fox senses are tingling. <laughs> the way they move the ears, like it's so it's so interesting, like yeah. how they tried to be so lifelike with it. That's Wes Anderson for you. Yeah. No! We swear he had nuclear codes. That's why we did this. <laughs> of course. <laughs> I Speaking. heard you mention Grand Budapest Hotel. Oh, what a film. I need I need to watch that one too. So That is funny. my favorite movie. Little Boobage in the beginning. Old Lady Boobage. Yeah. yeah. Very weird. It's a kind of a jump scare. <laughs> Not the tail. I, you don't expect it. There's one other like, oh, instance giant. like that in There's movies so where like it's just like really random boobage and it like it was it. You're like Yeah, it was an airplane. Um yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was in the moment where uh you know the captains are passed out and whatnot, and the stewardess is on the phone trying to keep everybody calm. It's like um you know, just uh reassuring everyone. Um everyone stay buckled up, we're hitting some turbulence, and everybody's just calm and listening. Also, does anyone know how to fly a plane? And then everybody just like freaks out and stands up, starts running around, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Topless lady just stands up, boobs right in front of the camera, shakes them, and then runs away. It's like, what the crap, people? Yeah. Wait, wait, that was an airplane? <laughs> that was an airplane, yeah. Yeah. I had forgotten about that scene. It was so, like... It, that's, it's such I, a good I, movie I, that oh, the boobs yeah. are, like, uh, oh, secondary yeah, in your memory. Yeah, airplane. I know airplane. I've totally yeah, Jeb seen has airplane. definitely watched airplane. He I've, knows I've exactly what we're it. talking about. That's, yep, airplane and uh, the, 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 the movie, you know, and, and the air with the plane and Airplane and, and Shirley Jeb, and Old Jebethy is one of the most cultured men on the planet. In oh, case yeah. you didn't know, yeah. he's seen every movie that we've ever talked about. That's true, except for this one until last night. But I did see it. But you have seen, about. but you have heard of it. <laughs> I find. It. Oh, 
I like how Kylie's just living with him now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I freaking love Kylie. All right. I like that my, they had him at the kids' table. Yeah. My <laughs> one complaint of this movie, and it's something they do a lot, the close-ups of their face. Oh, you don't like that? I. You don't like it? No. It's a little creepy. That's fair. They're like. <laughs> The one thing I will say is like the 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 close-ups of clay animation do oftentimes look creepy. And, yeah. and especially when yeah. they when they do like the hair and the teeth and whatnot, yes, it it does when make even like innocent later. moments look a little unnerving. Yeah. It, it it's interesting to me like how much this movie focuses on avoiding consequences of actions. Yeah, it's like a running. It, it, I mean, it's one of the big running themes through the movie, uh, because like every time he gets into a bind, he comes up with a new scheme in order to get out of it. Um, it you know, it's this cyclical pattern over and over. I mean, we see people do it in real life all the time. It's sad. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can we also talk about how awesome of a character she is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. She, yeah. Felicity Fox is a great character. He's a wild animal, guys. Because mm-hmm. that's his biggest fear. The like, wild animal thing. Like, yeah. So many times in movies when wives are like, why did you lie to me? The husband doesn't have an answer. He had an answer immediately. Yeah. Yep. Because his whole thing is that he wants to be great, and that's his. He, he wants to be more than a wild animal, yeah. and then that's what that's his biggest fear throughout the movie, and then that's what the wolf symbolizes. Yeah. Mm. Until finally, he kind of has to adopt the wild animal part in order for them to survive. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> Junior, it's just like nice that they have all of these just wrong. Like they have just all these lying around. <laughs> <laughs> Another example of why this movie has an amazing soundtrack. Yes. Yeah. Street Fighting Man by the Rolling yes. Stones. Yes. James, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but you have got probably one of the most cultured senses of music. You have the best taste of music. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. You really do. You really do. This is this is true. You always have a good song for every situation. I try. Well, thank you. All right, so let's... I like let, how one of the... <laughs> go for it. Oh, I, I was just going to say, so we all know uh, Fox's signature, the good... <laughs> type of thing. Yep. What do you guys think were some of the failed signatures that didn't make it past the intern floor? Hmm. Jazz hands. <laughs> jazz hands. <laughs> <laughs> While saying it, jazz hand. <laughs> uh, probably the ear ear twitch with a wink, like, eh? Eh? <laughs> like, I'm not a fox, so I can't like twitch my ear. Need some ear headphones. <laughs> no. I draw the line at that. I draw the line at that. I, oh, is, I, I, I'm is glad. That, is you that do. where we're drawing the line? That's where I'm drawing the line. Y'all don't have to, but I'm drawing the line. Next, the next podcast, we should all show up with like with like eared headphones, except for Jeb. Y'all can do that. I'm fine. I mean, I'm trying to save money. Thank you very much. Because oh, podcast listeners, I just realized a huge news that I didn't tell you guys. This is true. I'm engaged. Tell them. Yeah. I am engaged. Very oh, yeah. happy about that. No longer just Jeb. No longer. Yeah. That's what her, <laughs> that's what her uncle exactly. said when she, when he saw the post. I'm no longer just Jeb. Yep. That's right. So we got, but come... I am just a man. <laughs> Not the creator superhuman. Formerly known as just Jeb. Yes. <laughs> the artist formerly uh, known as just we're Jeb. We're going to have to do some rebranding. Yep. Yeah. This is the ugliest child. <laughs> the tie. And I used to teach, so I've seen some kids, man. That's an ugly kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think what was if I I don't remember which book it was, but Roald Dahl had this thing like a person 
like that person's attitude is what makes them ugly. And then you can be like the most physically ugly person in the world and be beautiful by your inward thoughts. I don't remember yeah. what book that was in. Hmm. I want to uh, say it was The Witches, but I might be wrong. I'm not sure. Shel Silverstein has a beautiful poem based on that. Uh, where he has a, a man who has flowers growing out of his head. It's like the man with beautiful thoughts or something <laughs> like that. I could see Tim Burton animating some of Shel Silverstein's poems. Mm-hmm. Yes, that, that would that be would... wonderful. Mm-hmm. What's he doing next? I wonder. I don't know. He's kind of he's kind of faded into the background a little bit. I feel like after Frank and we- Frank and Weenie, he hasn't really done much. Or yeah. maybe it was the last Alice in Wonder <laughs> live action movie. I think so because I mean Frank and Weenie was okay. Yeah, I mean, it was. We don't talk about the live action Alice in Wonderland movies. <laughs> I saw another the... example of using swearing creatively in this film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <He's> just... <laughs> He's just such a sweet, unassuming guy. I know. He is. You're making a sound, though. Can we talk about how um yeah. Oh, what's his name? Ah, I forgot his name, the kid. Christopherson? Ash. No, Ash. Ash. Can we talk about how Ash is like always wearing underwear that looks like a diaper. <laughs> You're <I> mean, right. <laughs> fun fact, in the book it was three kids, so Ash's was rolled into one. Oh interesting. Probably a smart move. That would have been a lot to animate. We have rights. Jab, compose yourself. That mud, chew in your yeah. mouth, and swallow it. <laughs> this is an. This is one of those big oh heck moments. Yeah. And sadly, that action right there, close. that over-the-top like kung fu type of action, it's more realistic than seventy-five percent of uh, Marvel fights. Oof. Well, well, Stephen, of, of obviously it's more realistic. Do you expect to go to space to fight a giant purple man? No, but I also don't expect uh, a lady to do a jumping splits kick and knock two men unconscious. No. It's well, also a comic. I agree with that one. Then to spin on the floor doing literal breakdance moves and knock out two more men by hitting them in the arm. Look, she's just a poser, okay? She's just a poser. That's all it is. I will anyway. say, if I were a wizard, I would use magic to fight, too. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is. Captain America has a giant frisbee, and that's kind of cool. It is pretty cool. (laughs) Different. (laughs) Goose. Goose is just being a... He's being a dumb butt. No. Goose, come here. Don't talk to Goose like that. Goose is sweet. Goose is sweet. (laughs) Goose is sweet, but he's also a turd nugget. That's true. He's a he is a turd though. nugget. Wait, Bomber! My son. Dig a tunnel, dig, dig, dig a tunnel. Secret dig a tunnel. tunnel. Oh, a secret tunnel. Yeah, that, that would have been another good one. Secret tunnel! Uh, you don't know about secret that. You haven't seen tunnel. that. Yeah, you don't know no. about that, James. You haven't well, seen Jeb, Wait. I, uh... I've actually seen the second episode now. Oh my gosh! Breaking news, everyone! James has actually seen the second episode of Avatar The Last Airbender. This is a very huge moment because for the longest time, literally for the past two years, I feel like, he's only seen the first one. I've only seen the first uh, No, I bought the Blu-ray box set on uh, Prime Day, so... Oh, cool! You've only seen yeah. two episodes of Avatar The Last Airbender. I know. I, I know, Steven. Try to, contain, try to contain yourself. It's... It's... I know... 
My fiance has seen Avatar The Last Airbender before James has. What, what, what are we even doing oh, here? Oh, no. I know. Why don't we just change it to men who talk through Avatar? Except for James, who has to sit and watch in silence. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he has to mute all of us. He has to mute all of us. <laughs> That's rough, buddy. <laughs> hey, you don't know that. You haven't seen it. This is my favorite fact, scene. The, in the, the guy that's singing the I song is uh, Mr. Jarvis Cocker. And that is actually what he looks like in real life. Interesting. Oh. Really? Yes. I they modeled the, the character after him. They put a lot of effort into that's him. That's really cool. I mean, like, he looks great. You see the reflection in his glasses. I like that the newscaster is in on it. See, here's here's dark theme. Over the top happy. Uh, yeah. I, I, you see, I used to be very compassionate to Over the Hedge, and then I saw this, and I was like, Over the Hedge just ripped this off, and this is better. <laughs> Wait, you say this ripped off Over the Hedge and is better? No, 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 no. Uh, over the Hedge ripped this off. Are you sure? Yeah. I don't know. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up, everyone. I have to do research. This had to be first. I, I think this was first. This was in 2009. The Over the Hedge, the film came out before this one did. Oh. Yeah, the film came out. You're the bad song, PT. Am I? <laughs> Take it back. Well, to, to be fair, to be fair, Steven, the book you, did come you, out first. The, the book came out first, so your, your, your argument might still be valid. That's true. That's true. Fun fact. So this movie was nominated for two Oscars when it came out, or the year it came out. It was nominated for Best Animated Film. Oh, wait, I love this part. Yeah. <laughs> we all know that one guy. We all know this guy. I felt this way many times. Yeah. <laughs> I was this guy. <laughs> for the record, I really was not this guy. Steven no. knows what I'm talking about. When we were growing up, I would like trash the youth room and all that would really do would be me flipping a few chairs i have that video <laughs> it's so funny it because... is really funny because we like we walked in the room and there were like chairs overturned the trash can was <laughs> emptied um and we'd walk in the room you just be like hey guys guys what's going on we'd just be like jeb what the heck happened to the room what are you talking about he starts setting <laughs> chairs back up i don't know what you're saying and we walked out of the room at one point and then we look through the window of the door and we like literally see a chair fly. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite, my favorite ways of trash. Now for those listening, I really wasn't like angry trashing the room. Oh no, it was, it was funny. Uh, that, All in it jest. was for, and like nothing really was getting thrown. What I would do was I would gently, <laughs> I would gently like put the chair, like face down on its side. <laughs> Because, you know, uh, yeah, you threw the one plastic chair, but it was a stupid plastic chair that was already half broken. Yeah. But yeah, it was it was that those wants good to times. go out. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah. OK. But now, this movie now was nominated for two Oscars. And it had the misfortune of coming out uh, the same year as a little film you probably haven't heard of called Up. Yeah. <sighs> and it lost to both. It lost both categories to up. Which yeah. is sad, but at the same time, it's like, I get it. Yeah. But mm -hmm. these days, Oscars don't really mean much anymore. When they gave, what was the year that they gave the uh, the Oscar to uh, Moonlight instead of, there was a really good film that was out that year. I don't remember what it was. But they gave the the Oscar for Best Picture to Moonlight, which nobody watched. Nobody watched except for the LGBT community. Um, I don't. I don't remember that most, year. Most films they get nominated for best picture movies that the general public doesn't watch. Yeah, which is sad yeah. because it's like you, these people. You you guys are making these movies for us, right? Well, then the argument should. I mean, I kind of agree that the movies that win best picture should be those movies that no one watched because, I mean, I know I'm. I'm 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 an exception. No one watches all the movies I know, but I know the movies that come out for the general audience. Why would we want a Marvel movie to be nominated for an Oscar? 
Guardians of the Galaxy or Infinity War could have easily been nominated for a lot of them. I agree with those two. And I think Guardians Infinity War was Infinity more deserving than Black Panther. Agreed. Mm-hmm. But because like those are the movies we get. The movies the general audience get are either like yes, they're like triple A films, but it's like a dumb plot, like Moonfall. Like what the heck? No, no. Why would Moonfall win like Best Picture? So, but you get what I'm saying, though. Yeah, yeah. It's funny how we don't care what uh, crackheads think until they made a movie. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought of it that way. <laughs> now, you often forget here if you see that that the cookbook there on the table. Like one thing that's like this movie's set in England. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! And nobody is British except the humans. That's so funny. I didn't even think about that. You're right. Jungle spices. Oh, love her. Best character. <laughs> She's so I, scary. I, I love he made his own bandit mask out out of a fo- a sock. Yeah. You got a bandit mask? No, but I modified this tube sock. <laughs> We look good. <laughs> one thing I love about the film is yeah. like one thing I just like about Wes Anderson in general is I'm a sucker for his cinematography style. Oh, it's so good. Oh, that's a beautiful. Oh, her face yeah. in that moment. So that was terrifying. beautiful. All right. So, my boys, we are all YouTube creators here. So, we are. I have a question for you guys. No. Twofold. No, no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm the host, Stephen. Who's my question? No, it's my question. <laughs> you loser. I have questions for y'all. Why did I do this? Why did I make this stupid deal? Uh, yeah. My question for you guys are. Um, hey guys, I got a genie joke. No, Stephen, I've got a genie joke. <laughs> oh, you got a genie joke? I'd love to hear it. I tell uh, it in a minute. Go ahead and do the question. Uh, uh, I'm, 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 I'm researching my question. <laughs> oh, good lord! Hey, I've got a question. No, okay. I've got a question. But just to be so... safe, what was your question? <laughs> uh, which is y'all's most popular video, guys? Steven. <laughs> okay. So my most popular video just oh, exploded. Hold up. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Fun fact about that scene. Yeah. The only scene that was CGI. Wow. With, like, the, the cider going through. Like, that was the I mean, only scene in this movie and that was CGI. I mean, that makes sense. It was so well done. And it... <laughs> Speaking of Flint, I think the water here is cleaner than Flint, Michigan. Oh, gosh. Bruh. <laughs> uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry, Steven, as you were you see, saying. You see, we, we, we can hear a joke like that and we can be like, ooh, ooh, this is a good burn. And all the people in Flint, Michigan are like, yeah, it's still true. Um... But yeah, my most popular video just blew up this week. I found a new SCP game. Everybody knows what SCP is? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. For audience members who may not know, uh, SCP is kind Super of like cool this. cool pinatas. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, uh, a short story hub where uh, people can write stories about these anomalous objects that, you know, act outside of the ordinary and have to be contained by this secret government agency. Um. So the original game that was made was called SCP Containment Breach, and it's a great game, and I do videos of that. But the one that really took off is I found a game. It's a, it was an early access demo, not complete. There's a lot of stuff that's still missing, but they wanted to release it out there so that people could give like quick reviews and help them fix bugs. And it's, uh, it's of the story of When Day Breaks, which is a theory for SCP-001, which is supposed to be the most dangerous one. And the idea is the sudden suddenly will turn red one day and then everybody kind of like melts into goop and forms into another like larger massive goop and tries to bring people that haven't met the sun yet into the sun so that they can all join into this one massive organism. Hmm. So it's supposed Hmm. to, it's one of the few world ending SCPs. And so they made it into a game and for some reason it just took off like that. I started off with 59 subscribers. I've now got 82, and the video today is going to pass a thousand views. 
That's awesome. Oh, wow. Beautiful. That is really That's cool. That's the movie title. Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is like, this is the it. scene where he's talking about how, like, he wants to be more than a wild animal. Yeah, it's so yeah. heartfelt. It's one of the best things in the film. Can we talk right. about relatable? Yeah. Because that's what I've kind of been struggling with with recent years is what I want to do. Like, yes, I'm going to school to be a youth pastor. That's what I'm called to do. But I have a passion for this kind of like creating and whatnot. And I want to create something story-wise, you know, whether it's a game, a movie, write a book. I want to create something that's impactful you know so like this kind of that kind of struck a nerve with me last night not gonna lie and which is yeah. the purpose of these of these stories it's supposed to inspire if it doesn't inspire yeah. it's not really art it's just a, it, it's a something you sell to make right. money so spash what is your most popular video My most popular video is the first video on my channel. I think it has around 150 views, and it's the first episode of my own podcast that uh, we stopped doing after three episodes because uh, I got a new job, mm. and it uh, took up all my time that I was using to do the podcast. But uh, <clears throat> I think my next most popular video is perhaps the one where Spash the Dwarf eats mac and cheese ice cream. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. And, uh, like, if, if that's... I I wish for that one to be the most popular because I feel like it's the most entertaining. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, it's the one I'm most proud of, I'll say. Not very nice, yeah. very nice. James, what is your most popular video? Um... Was it what, what, what was it? Was it was it called Coppa, the thing that they passed on YouTube a few years ago that was like trying to like hold like it, it, was, trying, it was trying to make YouTube or maybe even Kappa or something. It was something that was trying to make YouTube more kid friendly. Yeah, it was which was a big yeah, it was Coppa. Yeah. Okay, it was Mark. Yeah. Pre Coppa, I had a YouTube poop that I made when I was thirteen and it got like eighty two thousand views. Mm-hmm. And I deleted it because um, I didn't want to get nuked into oblivion. Mm, but since fair. then, I recorded myself playing the demo for the Lord of the Rings trading card game from back in the day. And mm. it's about 5,000 views. That's awesome. Oh, wow. But it's just me playing a card game. It's, it's like nothing. I just. There's like the, the, during the pandemic, a lot of people were just buying up those cards just because they were bored. And there's like a. A player community around it and so they were learning to um i guess just to refresh their memory on how to play the game yeah gotcha but that's i think that's why i got so many views so i'm gotcha. going back i'm going through my content right now it's probably one of the early edits you did it really is because i just found a video that's over a thousand views right now so before i became a let's player channel and a little bit after I would make these, uh, like, I would take the audio of a movie or a show or a scene of something, and I would use it with Kingdom Hearts. So right now, my most popular video with 1,095 views is Sora versus Roxas, or Riku, Naruto. Yeah. I, I don't know why that is it. It has 16 likes. It has 1,000 views. But I think out of my Let's Play ones, I think my Kingdom Hearts 3 Let's Play, specifically the episode, oh, this is a cool scene. Yes. Yes, it is. With them fighting. Just gotta... But my uh, popular Let's Play video with, I think, um, 300 and... Oh, what was it? Hold up. I think it was 300 and... 25 views is Kingdom Hearts 3 part part I'm looking for it guys I'm sorry I'm sorry oh here we go with 310 views uh Kingdom Hearts 3 part 25 the Keyblade War yeah 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 I remember that one 
and that's basically in Kingdom Hearts 3 where it's not the finale, but it's the final battle, right. if that makes sense. Yeah. And yeah, that has 310 views, and that's all out of my Let's Play videos. Yeah, that's a, and, and that drew a lot of, your uh, Kingdom Hearts 3 Let's Play drew a lot of people to your channel. It really did. <clears throat> so, my next question. His <laughs> next question. My next I'll... question. Uh, Steven, mm -hmm. which of your videos do you wish was your most popular? All right, so um, outside of Mongoose Productions, because uh, Mongoose Productions was the first thing that we created, uh, but mm -hmm. going to my specific one out of one channel, uh, the video I wish was most popular was one I did back in college with my buddy Chris. It's called I Killed Chris. I remember that one, yeah. <laughs> that was a, oh my gosh, that was so fun. That was the most fun video I've recorded on my personal channel. Uh, cause it was just, it was the two of us just goofing off. And, you know, I like, he's like asleep on the couch and there's like a little Nerf gun on his chest. And so, like, I'm just like, I, I pick it up and I'm just kind of like goofing off and whatnot. And then I accidentally shoot him and he dies. I kind of like slump beside him and I like poke him a little bit to see if he's okay. And he goes, ah. <laughs> and I poke him again. He goes, ah. <laughs> I poke him again. Ah. <laughs> it was so good. And then the whole rest of the video is just like me trying to find places to hide his body. It was great. That is, that's awesome. <laughs> it is uh, wonderful. Wish that video had more, more views. Spash. Yes. Which video do you wish was your most popular? Uh, I'm looking at it right here. I had to remind myself of the name. Uh, it's called A Dwarf Damages Himself Irreparably. Yes. <clears throat> where I uh, eat ice cream that is... Uh, <laughs> I eat ice cream that's mac and cheese flavored. <laughs> and it nearly uh, kills me. And I'm still fighting the damages oh, yeah. uh, done to me that day. Now. <laughs> Spash, I got, I got to tell you, though, um, I, I've got to just give you a heads up. Black Tar Heroin is not going to fix that damage, okay? You got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I do need to uh, kind of rein that in, don't I? Yes. But it, eh, but I do uh, kind of need it, though, don't I? <laughs> I hate myself. You got you to gotta rein that vein in. <laughs> Brother, <laughs> that reminded me of a terrible story. Um, <laughs> I'll tell it very quickly. Okay. Um, <laughs> so uh, in twenty twenty, the... <laughs> I, I, this was a good... in in March twenty. Hey there. I mean, I'm here. Yes, hello. I want to go with you. Sure. I thought we lost you for a moment. Um, <laughs> it's so cute. You're Kylie. All right. <laughs> Poor Kylie. <laughs> he didn't get a job or a Latin name. <laughs> Kylie Kylie's even had possums in nature. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> <laughs> they even had possums in nature. <laughs> um, a, Calm down. a possum's Latin name is Didif uh, Diddle Fail. My Latin's terrible, even though I took it in high school. Um, it's Didelphus Didelphus Virginiana. That's what he is. Okay. Oh, a Virginia possum. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> cool. Uh, James, which one do you wish was? Whoa, 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 whoa! Why don't you? I was making sure hey, Spash was hey, done. You, you want to, you want to cause a war here, son? Yeah, you wanna fight me, bro. Civil, I will fight. fight you. You will probably win. I'm not very as. <laughs> I'm, I'm not more. I might be a black belt, but I haven't practiced in like apparently six years. That are you? I've, that's you're a black belt. I am a black belt. Did you not know that? No, no, I didn't oh. know that. Oh. Yeah, I'm That's I'm cool. a black belt. Steven's a black belt. Yeah. I didn't what? know you were a black belt, Steven. Yeah. <laughs> we did martial arts you together. His so dad cool. taught us at um 
We had like a martial arts ministry, a self defense class at our church. Yeah, yeah but Dad, that's so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I would say everyone has a dad. Well, like, oh, the 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 graffiti there that says "cuss" in the background. Yeah, I love yes. that. I didn't notice that before. <laughs> I didn't <even. laughs> But uh, I'll quickly finish this story so we can get to James's answer. Okay. But um, March of 2020, uh, I was helping my dad move a grill out of a brick casing with our tractor. And uh, the chain with which we were lifting it uh, broke, and the grill fell down and bounced on my hand between some bricks. And uh, it ended up just mangling my hand. My whole hand was broken, but you can really only see it in this uh, one finger, which I'm not going to leave by itself uh, because it is the center one. Oh, yeah. But uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> it's only, it's only they, bad if you turn it against somebody else. True. Because that's... Um, but the reason you, it reminded me of it when you said vein is because my veins are so deep under my skin, they had to stick me 65 times to find a vein. Oh, no. Oh, no, Fred. Yeah. Oh, no. And so uh, when I got out of the hospital after the surgery, my hand was just covered in these bruise marks. <laughs> oh, no. And... uh I don't remember any of it, but my sister was telling me about it. I was like, I don't, I don't remember this at all. But uh, that that was my story. Sorry uh, to carry on there. So the side James. Story, so, okay. I don't necessarily oh. have one. No, oh, you don't have a video you wish that was popular. No, I mean oh, okay. it's just like if people like my memes, I'm I'm glad they like my memes, and like even though they're terribly unfunny. There was an old one you did. I think it was the <laughs> first video of yours that I saw. You did the old Arthur DW meme where Arthur punched you and you like yes. flopped backwards. I, I loved that. <laughs> I did. I forgot about that one. Contact. Right, on Steven, fire. What were you? What were you going to say? No, but I, I just my memes are dumb, and you know I'm just glad people like your memes are fantastic, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> fantastic, like this movie. It is a fantastic movie indeed. <laughs> Why? That's stupid. I don't like these myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Fun oh, fact: but... when they recorded this movie, they didn't do it in a traditional recording studio. They actually yeah. filmed, like, recorded it outside and in a barn and things like that. That's why I like the audio so That's much. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It it sounds real. Ambient noise is just so underutilized a... in these things. Agreed. You're right. That's such a Wes Anderson thing to do. Yeah. All right. My, <laughs> I son, love that. my turn. <laughs> yes, that's Just right. That's the right. Because, Jeb, you were very polite and let everyone else go first, even though you Thank stole you, my Jeb. question. But go on. Sir, I am the host. I would never steal your material. This is why you told me to be the host, the host, so I'm trying to host. Let me ask the questions that I obviously made. It's funny because, like, his mother sent me a message before we started and said, don't give Jeb too much power. Now I know why. <laughs> no one man Jeb that power. <laughs> that is not... Oh, I gotta... Ch no, I'll check that later. I've always had good grades. <laughs> How the cuss did you qualify for this? <laughs> Anyways. Jeb. Oh, hold hold, hold, hold up. <laughs> Oh, the yeah. trademark. The trademark thing. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought another anyway. failed another failed trademark of a uh, of foxes. Oh yeah. Yep. Do you imagine? But the ult the ultimate failed <laughs> trademark. Okay. Okay. Ring, 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 no. Ring, 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 ring. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> End the episode. Cut it what off. What does End the, the fox say? <laughs> <laughs> that dog has right, spits the rabid dog. <laughs> spits. Blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's written right there. I relate to that level of forgetfulness. <laughs> but Jeb. Yeah. He eats so <laughs> I think he ate soap. <laughs> it's rabies. But 
Jeb, sure what is what speaking. video do you wish was the most popular? <laughs> Please. Um, <laughs> I guess if I had to pick one, two series, two two series. Okay. Which were my very first Let's Play series, and then the sequel to that game. Mm. I wish my Last of Us series, because this also leads into what po will possibly be another future project I'm going to do. So, my first Let's Play was The Last of Us. Yeah. When I played it mostly through the first time blind. So I did. Fast forward three years later was The Last of Us Part 2. Very controversial game for very stupid reasons. Like, if you didn't like what they did, excuse me, if you didn't like what they did with the story, that's fine. But don't say because of what they did with the story, it made it awful. Because Naughty Dog had a plan. And I sure. understand that plan now. They were trying to teach the players empathy. Yeah. Steven, how much do you know of it? Because I don't want to spoil it for you. You've told me bits and pieces of it. You've told me enough that I know the, the general reasons why it's such a big deal. Do you, though? The general reasons. What's the general reason? Uh, it's and it's because of a certain character dies. That was just one reason. No, 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 no. It's because of the trans character. No. I mean, yes. Okay. But no. And some people did have issues. Okay, I'm going to tell you, and then I want to see what your reaction is, okay? Okay. Because I do plan on doing a Twitch Let's Play of it, because I just bought part one. Okay. The remake. You get to play as Abby. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Like, and I, like, so you go through Ellie's story. Mm-hmm. You get to like the big climactic moment or a major mo thing of conflict. It cuts to black, and then you see Abby's perspective of the events. Oh, yeah. And like so, that's, that's like how you complete the game. Well, yeah. Huh. So, and what people didn't like spoilers for those, and I apologize, but this is your spoiler warning now about The Last of Us Part Two. Um. You play as Abby, and Abby killed Joel. Yeah. A lot of people did not like that. And it's not like you get to play her for, like, an hour. To, no, like, that's ten hours you play as her. Wow. To the You even have a boss fight at the end of Abby's story where you fight Ellie as Abby. Oh. You can see why people didn't like it now, right? I can see it, yeah. It's but an it's experiment. Really, it, it is a good, cool experiment, and... I see. I see what people um were trying to what the Naughty Dog was trying to do. Anyway, I, I'm going off topic. Mm -hmm. Projects I wish were more popular were my Last of Us project. I'm hoping gotcha. when I start Twitch streaming the Last of Us, the new remake, and part two alongside of it, it'll get more popular because I want people to see how my content creation has evolved and grew. Because if you watch my part my first Last of Us playthrough with my Last of Us Part 2, huge improvement. Yeah, I agree. I'm rambling, and I'm sorry about that. No, you're that. fine. You're fine, dude. I was just looking at Spash's face. He was just like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just listening. I like listening. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> going, going back for a brief moment to The Last of Us, I never fault a creator for trying something new. I never yes. fault a creator for experimenting. I do fault them for not having discernment. But yes. in terms of like, in, in terms of that, like I get that people wouldn't like that, but at the same time, like it's a good experiment. Yeah. And, and it, like, like my favorite moments of part two, when we were doing, when, when I was playing it for the first time, I would intentionally let Abby die. Like, I'd be like, oh man, one second, I, I got to go uh, get something to drink. I got to go get something to eat, leave the game playing, yeah. see that Abby dies. I'm like, oh no, Abby, no. Like, for example, oh, Abby, no. Oh, Abby, gosh, I'm so sorry, Abby. Shouldn't have killed Joel. <laughs> 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 That was really good. That was one of my favorite ones. The other one I think was my so, favorite. Someone was... clipped that and used it as a reaction. <laughs> Shouldn't have killed him. 
<laughs> Shouldn't have killed Joel. That was one of my favorite ones. <laughs> my other one was like, I went to go get like a brownie and I was like, oh, Abby, I was just getting hungry and eating something sweet. Shouldn't have killed Joel. And I just shoved the brownie in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will find you guys those clips so y'all yeah. can see the actual raw reaction because watching like video essays on it, understanding what they were trying to do now, I don't hate Abby as a character. Do I? I hate her action she did, but as a character, she had a very similar journey to Joel from part one mm -hmm. where she adopted a kid and basically like became this kid's protector and mentor and was able to find redemption yeah. like joel did with ellie which is what i'm hoping i also what i'm hoping part for... three will be sorry i'm hoping part three will be ellie's redemption with the action she did in part two by finding a kid in part three mm -hmm. i'm okay i'm sorry what were you saying i was saying that that rabid dog probably just saved his life getting that necrotic flesh off of his neck yeah yeah probably yeah it's one of those little moments that I was like, okay, like for 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 like one moment, I kind of like halfway get it, but then like yeah. they keep the tail, and it's like, how much infection are you willing to risk? Yeah, surely, surely he took it to like a taxidermist or something. I would hope so. Please, for his own sake, <laughs> PB, bring us a ladder. <laughs> <laughs> With a can. With a can. <laughs> <laughs> it's all those little details. The little details make this movie. Like yeah. I love seeing blankety blank, like for example, two days, three and a half weeks, fox years, or three and a half this fox is weeks is oh yeah. This is what Wes Anderson said is the most important scene in the movie. I think I, I agree with that. Like this is this is just a beautiful moment. It's so mystical. <laughs> Man, that background setting, too. Yeah, I, I know yeah. the wolf is the important part, but daggum, that background setting. Just the same mountains as the Budapest. Yeah. That's true. Oh, the mangy hair is just. It fits so well. Fantastic. So. Wait. Ready? Ready? Nazi wolves confirmed. Nazi wolves confirmed. <laughs> well, no, because I'm not going to lie. When I watched it yesterday, that's kind of what I thought they were trying to, like, say. <laughs> no. Hey, it would have been different if it were a Nazi salute. That's probably but, communist. Well, not Nazi salute, but like it's a black wolf. It's probably communist. <laughs> Lifting no. his fist in the air. It's just so it's more like a we're saluting each other kind of thing. Oh uh, yeah. Like the whole point, like this is the scene Rock where on. he comes to terms that he is a wild animal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And then that was what the, the phobia the wolf represents. Yeah. Oh. See, I didn't get that last night, but also it was like one o'clock in the morning. And I love how much of, like, like, the movie does build up to that scene. It is, it, it's beautiful the way they do it because, like, his entire life he's trying to dodge the fact that he's a wild animal. And we've, we, I think we've already talked about it, but like, buying the the tree on the hill, um, having the fancy cushy office job, and all the while, like, his his spirit is just wanting to go kill chickens. I get it. Yeah. Like that's, and that's a good way to tell a story. It's this one, it's one plot point. That's consistent throughout the entire story. That's how you do good storytelling. It's almost like, I, I don't know if this is going to be controversial or not, but I don't care. It's almost like we should not hinder our true natures. Explain. Huh? Explain. Well, Fox's true nature is a wild animal. And like you were mentioning, he wasn't being happy. Mm -hmm. He was kind of having an existential crisis. He was living day to day. Yeah. Trying to keep his promise. Trying to keep his promise. But he was miserable. He His passion. Sorry, because this is actually kind of like Uncharted 4, if you will. Okay. I'm you, Mr. Fox 
told his wife to keep his promise. He was done with that life because it was dangerous. Uh, it was dangerous. He didn't want to put his family at risk. Fine. So he kept a, made a promise to get rid of that old life. But in doing so, he overcorrected and got rid of his passions. Mm. And because of that, he was being miserable because he wasn't doing what he loved. Yeah, right. And as the movie goes on, like right now, he accepts his passion as a wild animal, but knows he can do what he loves in a safer way for his family. Yeah, okay. Do And what I was trying to explain is we as humans, like if we have a passion... <laughs> okay, I get it. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I I think if I could summarize what you're saying, it's like he's finally accepting who he is and therefore We're both glowing. he's content. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so for us as well, we we don't need to deny the way that God has created us. Yes. We need to uh accept the way that he's created us. And so. live in that. Yeah. Okay. Did, yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah I guess. Yes. Did y'all notice he was getting on a soapbox? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. To go off of what you both just said, um, that one verse, um, train up your child in the way they should go. And he so shall not they're... depart from. That is yeah. what called me to youth ministry. Yeah. Because that was my calling to train the next generation to raise them up so they will not depart from that those teachings. Right. And the the way I understand it being the way they should go is not what you think they should go. It's the way that their gifts and their passions are naturally aligned mm -hmm. and the way that they want to – they are sort of led to go by the gifts that they're given. Um, help cultivate that. If it were a tree, cultivate it towards the sunlight that will help it grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not the way that you think it ought to be, necessarily. All right. Does, it, does I, that make sense? Yes. Also, I kind of wish they ended it after he said survival. Because you want to know what they did? They ended it the way... They ended it the way all early 2000 movies. They don't know how to end it, so they do a dance party. That is true, but that does kind of hold with what they've done earlier in the movie as well. I yeah. just noticed something too. Like you know how they all had apple box juices, like apple like apple juice boxes, except yeah. Ash. Ash. He because he's different. Yep, he had grape because he's different. Yeah. Oh. I just now noticed that. I didn't notice that either. I'm I, I'm glad you pointed that out. I didn't either. Yeah. That's cool. Um, and, and to kind of close out Jeb's point there for uh, ladies and gentlemen who have listened all the way through this podcast, really the point of this podcast is to show. Uh, you know, for those of us who are believers, how our faith lives out in every part of our lives. You know, yeah. when we when we talk about these movies and whatnot, you hear about our faith because it's part of who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you know, it doesn't mean that everything that we do is going to be preachy, but it, it means that you can't know us without getting to know who God is. That's that's mm -hmm. who we are. That's part of who we are. And just because we enjoy movies and we love creating things uh, doesn't mean that that's separate from you know, the rest of our being. So we well, want to, yeah. yeah, we want to give the example of how your faith and your beliefs are lived out through every aspect of your life. Yeah. Also, we like to make stupid jokes. Yes. Yeah, we do. And I like taking credit for things that weren't mine. We've also learned that with a uh, spacious deep veins that he can't do black tar or heroin because he can't reach them. <laughs> That's why I do it so much. <laughs> It's like eventually I'll get it. Eventually it'll all act. It'll all enact at once. No, oh, no. That's gonna be a bad day. It's like, that, oh, oh, it happened. Oh, 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 it happened. <laughs> well, guys, this has been another episode of Men Who Talk Through Movies. I hope y'all enjoyed. I hope y'all continue to share, like, whatever you do, comment on the YouTube video that's gonna get posted, listen to our uh Listen to the podcast, share it with the friends, watch yeah. the movie with us, please, guys. Yes, this is, that is the best way to enjoy the movie. Because a friend of mine told me it's just if you and your friends talking, and I'm like, yes, that's yes. what a podcast is. Yep. That's why we're doing it through the vein of a movie, so you can watch the movie with us. Yeah, like 
please watch the movie with us. That's the best way to enjoy it. Yeah. If you can't, well, enjoy our nice sounding voices. But guys, this has been another episode of Men Who Talk Through Movies. We're just a few guys. We like talking through movies. Jeb trying to come up with a closer on the spot. I really <laughs> am, guys. We need we need a closer. We do need a closer. Can I suggest a dance party? We're not. Do- no. What are we? An early two thousands movie? <laughs> yes. Do the bunker with me. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Spat. All right, man, welcome. whatever. <clears throat> oh, mama. All right, guys, but serious, but thank you for joining. I hope y'all enjoyed. I can't wait to s- hope y'all come back in the next one. And remember, we're just a couple of guys who talk through movies. Bye-bye. Bye. Fare thee well.